Hi everyone, Omega Reptiles here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to breed mealworms. So, here are the three different um, ways that they will be. So we got the mealworm, we have the pupa, which people like to call the alien looking thing, and we have a beetle, which I have upside down so it doesn't start crawling around. Um, so it starts off as a mealworm, of course, which is like a larvae of the beetle. Turns into a pupa, which you could think of as a cocoon for like a butterfly. And then turns into a beetle. Oh, and there it goes. So I'm just going to drop these guys in here. Now, I have my crickets in here too, but it's not really a big deal. They might eat some of the babies, but really, like, as you can see, like this is still working out perfectly fine. I have, like, hundreds, maybe thousands of mealworms in here. And, uh... If you look closely, you might be able to see the babies moving around in there. I don't know, but there's a ton of babies. Now, what you're going to want uh, to breed them is you're going to need an enclosure such as this. You're going to need oats, um, like on the bottom there. Picking your, type, picking your type of oats is not really a big deal. Really, you can get like the cheapest stuff like Quaker oats and walnut. Walmart brands, really cheap and stuff. So just get that stuff and fill up the bottom a little bit. Really, um, with mealworms, you don't have to worry too much about um, them eating each other because they really don't eat each other as much. Um, they also, unlike superworms, they will uh, turn into pupa uh, as a group, unlike superworms, such as these. Like superworms, you're going to want to keep separately. Uh, in like individual places. That's how you breed superworms. But if you guys want to see that, make sure to let me know in the comments. So as I was saying, all you need is an enclosure, the mealworms, of course, which probably you should get like 50 to uh, get a good start. Maybe like a 50 or 100 container. Um, I got that a while ago, and then I just went on from there. And you're gonna need some type of food. Um, this I use for the microgates and for the mealworms, so they're both really healthy and gut loaded and stuff, and keeping them alive, of course. Um, and I also use this stuff, which goes into the into the oats and stuff, so they can eat it out of there. They also do eat the oats and stuff, so as you can see, like that's their poop right there, really fine. Um, I got a ton of beetles and pupa and mealworms and stuff. So yeah, they're, they're really, really, really easy to breed. Like, you don't need a lot of work. But I also suggest uh, putting them in a dark a dark place. Like, I have this closed up, and then I tuck it under there. So it's nice and dark. So you really don't... I mean, they breed a lot quicker, I feel, um, if you breed them in dark spaces. You can also heat them up, but I don't need to heat them. My room's hot enough as it is, anyway. Uh, you don't need to, though. So yeah, they're really, really easy to breed, and once you get it going, you don't even really need to worry about doing anything except putting food in there. You could even just put, like, lettuce, potatoes, whatever, that kind of stuff, but I don't because, uh, fruit flies and stuff. So yeah. Um, now yeah, you don't need to put the crickets in here, of course, and really I highly suggest not. Probably be better, um, especially in the beginning, but after doing this for the longest time, there's no point of having two separate containers anymore. So yeah, as I said, really, really easy. And once you get the cycle going, it'll keep going from a mealworm to a pupa to a beetle, which then lay their eggs, which turn into baby mealworms, and then the process starts all over again. So yeah, comment, like, subscribe. Make sure to let me know if you have any suggestions in the comments. And we'll see you guys in the next video. See you later. Oh yeah, make sure to also follow my new Twitter, link in the description.